There's been a bit of controversy lately about Element Electrolytes and the maltodextrin that is in some of their products. Dr. Boz just released a very popular video on this topic, and you can see from this article on Element's website that their flavored electrolyte packets have anywhere between 250 and 550 milligrams of maltodextrin per serving, which is a lot higher than the four milligrams that Element originally thought was in each packet. So let's talk a little bit about maltodextrin and what it can do to your health. Let's dive into which Element products contain maltodextrin and which do not. We're going to touch a little bit on what Element is doing about this issue. I also have the results of some tests that I ran with my continuous glucose monitor, continuous ketone monitor, and my keto mojo meter to test the effect of the flavored packets on my ketones and glucose. We also ran the same test on my husband because his demographics are a little bit different than mine. And we're going to touch on how you can know if you are sensitive to maltodextrin. As you know, I drink Element electrolytes and I recommend them in a lot of my videos. So I want to make sure that you have all the information you need about this brand. I take my sponsorships and the brands that I use and recommend very seriously, so I felt like I needed to make this video. My background with Element is that I have been using them almost the entire time that I've been on Carnivore, long before I was sponsored by them. Their raw unflavored packets helped get me through the worst of my keto flu symptoms in the very beginning of carnivore. And I think that they're a game changer for people that are starting a low carb diet to help them get over the electrolyte imbalances that are so common in the beginning. So what is maltodextrin? Maltodextrin is a carbohydrate made from corn, wheat, potato, rice, or tapioca that is processed by cooking the starch and then breaking it down into acids or enzymes. It's used as a thickener, a sweetener, or a stabilizer in many foods and beverages. Maltodextrin can cause adverse effects in some people, including those with diabetes or gut inflammation. Maltodextrin has a high glycemic index, which means it can cause a spike in blood sugar levels. Now, this is very basic generic information and every individual is going to have a different response to maltodextrin, depending on a variety of factors. Let's quickly go over which Element products contain maltodextrin and which ones do not. Element's flavored packets do contain maltodextrin. The raw and flavored and their new sparkling waters do not contain maltodextrin. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I wear a continuous glucose monitor and I've been doing so since three and a half months before I started carnivore. So I am intimately acquainted with the way that food and drinks affect my blood glucose levels. At almost two years into the carnivore diet, I have become very sensitive to ultra processed foods and high sugar items. When I have a high carb cheat meal, my blood sugar can shoot through the roof if I don't consume protein beforehand or do you know, some other things that you can do to kind of buffer that glucose spike. I personally have never seen my glucose spike when I'm consuming any Element products, either the ones with maltodextrin or the ones without. But I ran a quick test of three of their flavors with my continuous glucose monitor, my continuous ketone monitor, and my Keto Mojo blood ketone and glucose meter just as a backup to confirm the CGM and the CKM readings. Here is how I set up this experiment. First, I would take the three measurements and then I would consume one of the flavored packets. Two hours later, I would take my measurements again. And I did this during during a 10 day sardine fast, right in the middle of it. So if I was going to have any kind of glucose spike or anything like that, it would have shown up very quickly because I'm only consuming sardines right now. Here are my results. I started with the chocolate packet. I did this at 6.11 in the morning. My continuous glucose monitor read 88. My continuous ketone monitor had my ketones at 1.3 millimoles per liter. And my Keto Mojo just backed up those readings with a 93 for my glucose and a 1.4 for my ketones. Ketones. I measured again at 8, 10 a.m. My CGM glucose was 92. My CKM ketones were 0.5. And on the Keto Mojo, it confirmed those readings at 85 and 0.5. That one was interesting because that was kind of a significant drop from 1.3 millimoles per liter down to 0.5. But around 8.30, so about 20 minutes after I took that test, my ketones were back up to 1.0 and then 1.3. And if I look back at my continuous ketone monitor data, whenever I track it, this is a two week monitor. These are normal spikes for me while on a sardine fast. So I don't know if that was related to the elements. The next packet that I tested was the watermelon packet. I did this at 11.15 AM. This was after I had eaten two cans of sardines with lemon around 9 
morning, 15 a.m., and I had drank some black decaf coffee as well. My continuous glucose monitor was at 94. My continuous ketone monitor was at 0.5, and my Keto Mojo confirmed those at 95 and 0.6. At 1.30 p.m., I tested again. My CGM was at 87. My CKM was at 0.8, and my Keto Mojo was at 78 and 0.9. So for the second packet, my glucose went lower, and my ketones went higher. But I don't know that that's really lower and higher because it's only a few points and all of these numbers are just within range. So if I was looking at these numbers, I would just say that everything stayed constant for the most part. I did this one more time with one of the packets out of their chocolate medley. I did the chocolate chai. That's the one that I am always drinking out of that box whenever it comes out in the fall and winter. I did this at 6.15 p.m. My continuous glucose monitor was at 82. My continuous ketone monitor was at 0.5 and my keto mojo said it was 83 and 0.6 so confirming those numbers at 8 15 p.m we did the measurements again continuous glucose monitor 84 continuous ketone monitor 0.5 and the keto mojo said i was at 86 and 0.5 so for me i can drink the flavored packets that contain maltodextrin and not have an issue but i'm metabolically healthy i have less than a pound of visceral fat i work out a lot and i'm very strict with my diet so will somebody that has insulin resistance have have a different reaction to the maltodextrin that is in the flavored packets? Well, that depends on the person. We did a quick experiment running that exact same test on my husband. Now, my husband is about nine years older than me, so he's almost 50. He weighs significantly more than me. He's at 237 pounds. He still has about 40 to 50 pounds to lose, but we have gotten him down by about 40 pounds in the past, I don't know, four months. So his insulin resistance has improved. His visceral fat levels have gone from nine pounds to six pounds, but he still has a ways to go. He has slightly elevated fasting insulin, slightly elevated triglycerides. Everything's kind of coming together as we continue to lose weight, but he still has insulin resistance. So because maltodextrin can affect people that are insulin resistant more so than people that are healthy, I wanted to run this exact same test on him. He is also in the middle of fasting right now, but he's just doing a water fast. He was on day five when we did this test. So if he is going to have a response, if these packets are going to give him a glucose response, we would know instantaneously because his numbers have been very low and stable. So at 1.45 p.m., he did the watermelon packet first. His continuous glucose monitor was at 82. His continuous ketone monitor was at 2.0. And the Keto Mojo confirmed the readings at 94 and 2.0. At 3.45 p.m., the continuous glucose monitor was at 76. His continuous ketone monitor was at 1.8. And the Keto Mojo was at 79 and 2.1. So for him, we did the flavor packets back to back because I wanted to see if he did three flavor packets in a row, if that perhaps would also spike his blood sugar. So we we just went back to back. So his readings for the next packet for the raspberry are going to be, you know, the ending numbers for the first test. So CGM 76, CKM 1.8, and the Keto Mojo 79 and 2.1. That was at 4 p.m. At 6.05 p.m., his continuous glucose monitor read 67. His CKM was at 1.7, and the Keto Mojo was at 71 and 1.8. He finished off the day with a chocolate raspberry. We did this at 6.15 p.m. with the continuous glucose monitor at 67, his continuous ketone monitor at 1.7, and his keto mojo at 71 and 1.8. At 8.15 p.m., his CGM was at 69, his CKM was at 1.8, and his keto mojo was at 70 and 1.9. So for him, he had no effect to his glucose or ketones, and he is insulin resistant. How will you know if you're sensitive to maltodextrin? First, you need to go off how you feel. If you have any maltodextrin, containing product and afterwards you feel gross or you feel like you're really craving that item or you have any kind of gastrointestinal response like diarrhea, bloating, or stomach pain, it's probably a good idea not to consume that item. You can also do some testing on yourself with a CGM or a Keto Mojo meter or some blood work. These are excellent ways to see what your glucose response is going to be to certain 
foods and drinks. I personally use the NutriSense app because I think it has the very best data out of all of the continuous glucose monitor apps out there and I have tested them all. You can also do one of the over-the-counter continuous glucose monitors that are now on the market. Dexcom's is called Stello and Abbott's is called Lingo. Stello works with both Androids and iPhones and Lingo at this time only works with iPhones. And if you find that you're having a glycemic response to a maltodextrin containing product, you can make the decision whether to continue using the product or to stop using it. But don't just assume that it's going to do something negative to you. That's why I'm such a strong proponent of testing and figuring out what works best for you and your body. I also think in the carnivore community that sometimes people get really caught up in being like super strict with everything. And some people doing carnivore need to do that because they're dealing with really severe health conditions. But I do not think everybody needs to do that. And I think using Element as an example, let's say you're drinking the watermelon Element packets and you're drinking those instead of drinking regular pop, juice, sugary coffee or energy drinks, things like that, and it's working for you. You're using it as a tool. In that case, I really don't think it's that big of a deal. Unless you're having some kind of like severe response to maltodextrin, I don't think it's something that most people need to worry about. But again, you have to figure out what works best for you. You really have to think about what dietary lifestyle you can maintain for the long term. So I'm going to continue to recommend Element Electrolytes. I think they're a good brand. I think they've always been trans transparent in their sourcing and as soon as they found out that there was much more maltodextrin in their product than originally thought, they wrote an article about it and put it up on their website. Here is a statement from Element on this topic. This is directly from them. It says, we are working to address concerns raised by folks who are sensitive to maltodextrin even in small amounts. We have always been transparent about maltodextrin as a flavor carrier in some products. We know the flavored drink mix doesn't work for everyone and have the Element raw unflavored drink mix and the element sparkling as options which do not contain maltodextrin or you can make your own element at home home. They have a recipe that will let you know how to make elements at home using ingredients that you source. Do I wish that they didn't have maltodextrin in some of their products? Of course, and I hope that they decide to remove those from their flavored packets or at least get the maltodextrin back down to what it originally was supposed to be, which is four milligrams, which is just nothing. It's a drop in the bucket, inconsequential except for those that are most sensitive to maltodextrin. So let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Element has always been very very ethical and very open with their sourcing. And again, when they found out about this, they wrote an article about it and got it out there into, you know, the ether of the internet. If you would like to read the article for yourself where Element goes into the maltodextrin and addressing all of these concerns, I've put a link to it in the description below. I've also put a link to the electrolyte recipe that they have for you so you can just make this on your own. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I always want to be very transparent with you guys and get you guys the very best information out there. And since Element is one of my main sponsors, I just had to put this out there. This is not sponsored by them. This was something that I felt I needed to put together for you. And for me, you know, I don't want to be consuming a bunch of maltodextrin containing products, even though they're not really doing anything to me glycemically. But that's why I'm so thankful that we still have, you know, some products that have always been maltodextrin free in the Element line. And you know, if enough people are just kind of like, ugh, we don't want to use maltodextrin containing products, they will take it out of their products. We shall see what happens. Anyways, with that, I will see you in the next video.